Ryan Sungli of Ring Magazine here with Cletus Selden. Cletus, you're about to uh, fight uh, Roberto Ortiz in your uh, HBO debut uh, this Saturday at the NASA Coliseum. Um, tell me about that uh, experience. You're going to be fighting on uh, HBO for the first time. Um, any jitters about being uh, on that stage? I'm extremely excited and, and, and proud and honored to be really the real Long Islander on the card. Majority of the fans are my fans. And once they gave me a call, I didn't even care who the opponent was. I just wanted to get a fight. And I just fought, so this is even better than ever. So I'm excited and I'm proud to be back here on Long Island to show the fans what they're gonna, uh, what they're in it for. They're gonna see one of the best fights of the night coming out of me. This is a real home advantage because you're basically fighting that area all the time. So um, uh, the, the people there know you and everything. Um, uh, w w do you know anything about your opponent and uh, the challenge that he brings to you on uh, in your HBO debut? Yeah, fighting at home, having all those fans, they're even tailgating. That's how big it is. People don't tailgate for most events, but for boxing, my fans are tailgating. My opponent's 35 and 1, got 20 something knockouts, tough Mexican from Mexico, and his style and my style is why HBO bought us, because they're going to see one action packed fight. I talked to your promoter actually. He said uh, he said that there's a nickname for your fans, the Hammerheads? Yeah, that's what they call them. So on Long Island, all the hammerheads come to the fights, cheer and scream as loud as they can, and you know who they are as soon as if you get to the venue, you go, that's a hammerhead, that's a hammerhead. They are loud, they are obnoxious, they are a little buzzed, but they're my family and my friends, so you gotta respect them. You know, um, when I was uh, looking for uh, things to research about you, uh, I went to your Twitter account, you said you have one of the largest uh, collections of um, Funko Pop dolls in the world. Um, Tell me about that collection. What are some of your favorite uh, dolls you have? So uh, they're called vinyls. They're not called dolls. Right. Or, or bobbleheads. Um, I have one of the large collections in the country. I even wear a glow-in-the-dark chase uh, patch on my uh, trunks. Uh, we reached out to Funko. We actually almost got a sponsorship, but they just went public, so we had to change a few things. But um, I have one of the few, I think there's two people in the world that completed the Star Wars line, and I have a, a ridiculous amount of Star Wars Funko Pops. I have probably about 500 in just Star Wars. My highest pop is worth around $3,000. How did you get involved in that? Um, my girlfriend bought me one, and then we all of a sudden went pop hunting, they call it, and we saw that there was a tremendous value in it, and the biggest part of it was that there is actual value in it, and the pop collection is one of the newest, hottest things. When we went to New York Comic Con, if there was a thousand shops, seven or eight hundred of them had some kind of Funko Pops in them. It's ridiculous. It's a really big addiction, but I love it because it keeps me away from boxing. Nobody in the collection, nobody collects them, knows anything about being a boxing, so they treat me like a regular person, so it's awesome. So if like if at a press conference someone tries to like get under your skin, they might call it a doll, and then like you know then it'll be a brawl, right? Yeah, don't don't call it a doll because there will be a brawl. Don't mess with my Funko Pops and don't even touch them. I don't even let people look at them. It's ridiculous. It's an obsession that I can't help. Like, would you get upset like you brought like one to a press conference and it's like in the box still, and then like he takes it out the box and like it ruins the value? If you mess with my pops, you're dead. That's him. I want to ask you about your uh, your name, actually. I remember there was a funny story. Uh, your name is Cletus, um, but you're not a southerner or a farmer. I, how did you get that name? I got that name from Cleet Boyer. Cleet Boyer was the baseball uh, played third base for the Yankees. He was friends of my family. So as soon as I was born, I said, I'm calling Cletus. So I think that's a Cleet Boyer, third baseman for the Yankees from the 50s. Mm -hmm. And I just want to ask, 2018 uh, is coming up next year. Um, uh, what do you see for yourself in 2018? Uh, this, to me, this is a fight that's a title eliminator fight. Uh, Ortiz was supposed to fight Orozco back in December, uh, back uh, in September. Orozco never made weight. He's the number one contender. That fight fell through. And now I'm here fighting Ortiz. So this is a title eliminator fight for me. There is no tomorrow.